glasses, guys. I talked about them on my Instagram, but um, I have to wear these for driving, apparently. That's what they've told me. Don't need them for every single day to day thing that I do, but I need them for um, driving at night. So, still finding it really strange the fact that I need glasses, but hey ho, safety first. Uh, oh, nearly brought them. So, very strange one today, guys. I have a property that I'm not going to do. I'm actually going to trade it. And I was going to stick it in auction because I've got it at a really good price. And somebody I know, very close to me, in my private WhatsApp group of investors, they're Birmingham based, very successful people. Um, they do lots of different things. They trade cars, they trade watches, and they trade houses. Um, and they're a family, a very well-known family in Birmingham, very, very affluent very business minded, got a lot of respect from a lot of people. They contacted me and they said, Steve, we want this house, um, but we want to pay for it, as in you know the figures that you want in XYZ, but would you take something in trade? So, here we have this. And I actually own this exact watch already. Would I take this in as part of paying Rolex? Daytona, stainless steel, black dial, discontinued. I think it's 116520. Now, like I said, I actually have this watch personally in my personal collection, and I have it with the white dial as well, so we have both. I've got all the papers, everything's here. They've got everything attached inside. They want to use it as part payment. I've called my friend who's coming to my offices. I think I know what it's worth. I think it's worth between 16 and 19,000. That's where it should be at in today's market. Um, but it is discontinued, so it's only going one way. I am going to take it because it'll be stuck into the safety deposit box and it'll just be left there for 20, 30, 40 years. So the other ones that I have, I don't wear them. I use them as investments. So that's a, that's a, that's a really cool thing that happened actually. Um, never had that before where someone's offered me a watch in part exchange for a house. But also, a very cool watch as well. Watches can be great investments if you get the right ones. Don't fall for what they was at the height of COVID. That was just for gays and for Gazi. It was all birds and it was all nonsense. Now we're kind of like at the bottom of where the watch market should be. And over the next 12 to 18 months, you should see it increase. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, but even in 10, 20 years, there is no way it'll be lower than what it is now. I can't see it. Let's play a game. I'm on zero miles. How much does it take to fill up this Lamborghini Urus? I'm going to say £124. Me do. Do now. Uh, £123. Oh, still? £122. <laughs> Here we go. Are we doing the fast speed up MTV cruise thing? Yes, we are. Great. Has Duna got his hands on anything in that car that could hold this in place? Hold what in place? In the middle. Hold on, my AirPods, or no, AirPods might not be big enough. What about that black? It's my gate fob. What you is that in the middle? <laughs> what, what do you want to be held in place? Say again. What do you want to be held in place? So I'm going to put it in between this and that to hold the pump, so I don't have to hold it. Yep. Pass me that, please. That might hold it in place. Too big. What about the AirPods? Oh, it slows it right down. There. It's working. That's it, guys. Look, hands free. Looks it. Uh, 75. This is taking a while. And also, guys, it's freezing today. Oh. Who said 121? Is it 122? I don't know who won. Who won? Me. I'll take it. Did it again, got me on 10, got me on 10, got me on 10, got me on 10. Did it again, got me on 10, got me on 10, got me on 10, got me on. He's pretending like he doesn't want to be on the camera, and he does want to be on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> 
And he's dressed. You know who it is. <laughs> and he's and he's matching. He's you got trainers matching. Uh, great meeting. Really cool. Wait, what are you um, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of growth. There's a lot of things that are happening in the business. I've known this guy for over nearly three years now. We first contacted. We actually first went to his office when we first opened up this company, more or less. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully, great things. Birmingham collaboration as well, which is really important for the city. Um, the four brum campaign, which if you say it fast, ends up being four brum. Yeah, I have no idea about that one. But this yeah. stage of the business is really painful because we have something so good and trying to take it to that next level is so painful because we have to get the, the fundamentals of the which way we're going. Yeah. And sometimes you need outside interference, which is where Aaron comes in. Very excited. Look, this guy has achieved a lot. He's what I've seen from this guy in the property space, particularly over the last three years since I've known him, I haven't seen anyone else do in this short of a period. And the fact that he's done it organically without any real paid spend is the most exciting part of the next phase of growth. Because when we amplify all the good stuff that you're doing already and that you've already tested, that's where we're going to attract the best people in your community. So that's the most exciting part. And that's the right way to do it as well. Get your fundamentals right, get your personal brand, your organic, your events, your product right as well. You know, you've been continually improving the education you even offer over three years. I feel like we've got the we've got it now. Yeah. What I want to give for the next five years. So with all that effort and energy, now it's primed for hyper growth. And that's what new people Imagine new people, like when was the last time you felt like, whoa, new people, I've yeah. not seen you before. They're, they're interpreting all the value you bring for the first time. That means that you know some of the people who often see the value you bring, they're gonna get complacent. Like you said, you know, you've gone live 180 times in however, however long this year, right? It's like, people just get used to you over delivering. And now it's about, okay, actually, let's pull back all the information you've got because most people don't need all of it. And let's just feed them the pieces that are gonna accelerate them to building their property, their wealth building journey, whatever it is they want out of it. So that's the exciting piece. And uh, that's why this is gonna be big. Yep. You heard it here first. <laughs> Another event. Another 100 tickets sold. What's this, my hundredth event? Something like that, yeah. It is nuts, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It is nuts, the consistency, the amount that we do. So it's a big one. There's a special person sitting right there. She's back, she's on stage, showing people why she's the best in the business when it comes to property. Um, look at my team, look at my team. We ready? We ready? Yeah, so I've, I've placed it out a little bit different tonight, which I'm going to do some networking fun. Um, sold 100 tickets. Normally, 85, 90 people show up, 10 people get scared. Some people turn up in the car park and actually drive off because the fear of networking is a real big thing. Um, it's my job to make them feel comfortable. That's the key. Also, can we give a special shout out? Can we actually, not just to you, Phil, for making this special? Can we give a special shout out to this guy? So, known him for, how many years have I known you for? Pre-Covid. <laughs> Quite a few. About seven or five. Seven years, always delivers, never lets us down, always on time, just delivers, delivers, delivers every single time. There's his social media. Any of you need anybody for photos in the West Midlands. Do you travel out the West Midlands yet? Yeah, I do. Okay, for the right money? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Service is exceptional. Not putting any pressure on him, but we usually get the photos the same night or the next day guaranteed. All the time, never lets us down. So, that's the guy. We never let you use our videographers, but he really is our extended yeah. arm. So there you go. I have, um, fire safety officer signing off today for me that's been dragging on for a while I'm hoping that it's all going to be completed by the end of today we have completely listed and ticked off everything that needed to be done so that'll be really cool if that happens we also got three sign offs completed yesterday Dan Dan the man unbelievable all done 
building inspectors have come out, signed everything off, we've had all the confirmation, all the paperwork, all the emails have come through. So Dan, absolutely sensational job as usual. Webinar last night, game changer, completely different level. Made me realise how, how cool it is. And then I had a meeting before the webinar about property circle and the future of what we're doing. I give so much and I add so much value to my property circle community that and I actually don't think it's appreciated, not by everybody, I think 90% of people appreciate it, 10% don't, um, but I actually think I give too much. So we sat down as a team yesterday, we had a really big meeting, you saw Aaron Branch, and we were just trying to figure out what's next. What's the next stage of the property circle? We're growing at the most incredible rate I've ever seen. Growing at a rate that even I didn't predict. So now it's about managing it now before it becomes unmanageable. I think that's the thing. And obviously when anything grows, there's a lot of pain. So we're going through a really, really, really painful process at the moment. Guys, windows are being fitted right now on side first. We are here. This one, we have to lift up. So this one, we're having the windowsill raised. We're having it bricked up there, I'm presuming. That's what that's there for. We've got the front door on site, the back door on site. The back door's being fitted as we speak today. Patio doors in flat number one are being fitted for the rear entrance. We have an issue here. So these are four flats. We're trying to get four separate addresses so we can have four separate gas meters. The gas company is saying until we get the four addresses not happening. The council is saying that we're not giving you four addresses because we only have three on the system. Even though we're paying house tax on four. Um, and then also they want us to get more work done before they even come and have a look. And I'm like, we're at the end, it's just a kitchen and a boiler. Um, but hey ho, problems of being a property developer that in the real world are not problems. Um, also, big shout out, big, big shout out um, to Yanni. So he's just been on the phone to me and he was on the phone to me, only for like 10 minutes. Um, I'll give you an update on why he was on the phone to me. Um, huge shout out to you. Hello, hey Tracy with the good heels on. Let me tell you about my day, it won't be real long. These were dooners. I just took them off me because this 75 hard is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Great meeting with High Living Estates. We have something really special planned. Great people, really lovely people. Jump on the rent to rent into the development. Right now, I have a meeting with him because he's leaving to go on holiday. So Danny's now the new Duna. Then I have a meeting with this guy. And then I have a phone call to make now, which is super important. The call is six minutes late because we've just got the signal from which guy here. So. Guys, can I actually just talk about this because we've not released it to the public? It's only been in the deal sourcing side of things. No dates on there? Huh? The 29th and 30th? Yeah. 29th and 30th? Yeah. 29th and 30th of May. June. June. No, no. See, you got me confused there, didn't we set up? So, 29th and 30th of June, the deal sourcing accelerator at the Valfrey, two days. Overnight stay at the Balfrey, VIP dinner with me, guest speakers. We also have some leading experts in uh, certain industries coming on board. We're going to be teaching you all about HMOs, self-contained units, flat conversions, bed seats. If you want to be the best deal sourcer out there, you've got to find the best deals. And it's not like finding a three bedroom, semi detached house because there's lots of legislation. So, two days, one time. <laughs> 40 people, we've already sold 15 spaces, there's 25 left. Tonight I'm going to announce it to the room, it's in the link below, book a call, speak to us. Don't miss this one, it's one of the best ones I think I've ever done. Or, it's going to be one of the best ones I've ever done because the layout and the plan of it is exceptional. It's all about the people, that's how we know whether it's going to be the best, because the education is always on point. <laughs>
getting into property to quit your 9 till 5, the buy refurbish refinance rents can only work if you've got X amount of money. Because you can't refinance every single property and pull out all your money. That's the thing that everybody keeps getting lost on. The level that we are at now, I could find properties to pull all my money out all the time where people send them me. But the houses that are up to like, you know, 150,000, 160,000. Because the bigger properties, once you go over 220,000 in value, well, it's, it's all about the rental then to do the BRR. It's not 25% equity on a half a million pound house. It's 25% equity has to be left in, but what does the rental match up to, the stress test? So BRR is the best method ever, honestly, because if you buy something now, you refinance it now, and you wait three to four years, capital appreciation does its thing, so you can pull some more money out of it. But if you're trying to get out of your nine till five, well, the BRR method might not be for you, because you need to replace your salary, and you might only have a certain amount of cash to play with. But a lot of people sort of come to these events or think I want to get into property and they're like, I want to be a land developer and I want to make a million pound a month from the get-go. And it's just not attainable. Like, if you came to one of us and said, actually, I want to start with deal sourcing and I'd like to get a couple of deals a month and then within three months build it up to earning 10 grand a month, that's attainable. That, that's not difficult if you know what you're doing with deal sourcing. If you come to us and say, oh, I want to do a BRR and make 150 grand profit on my first one, again, you may come across an absolute unicorn of a house, but the probability of that happening is very low. It really is good. a really, really good event for really, really good, yeah. It was really nice to see Isabella on stage. Yeah. I think for us, being females, going into property, it's really and inspiring. And as well. Yeah, definitely. See, I think it's an amazing personality. You know that he's not rehearsed any of this. It's not scripted. It's a simple case of Steve being who he is, as he is on social media. It's simple, straightforward, blunt. And it's the honest truth. It's the reality check that he's provided to his audience. Isabella, she's really nice. I like how she's just honest and um, straight to the point. That's what we need in this world, to be honest. And um, yeah, I really like her. Steve. You see him on social media, he looks a bit intimidated. No, I was looking at him and I was like, oh, I don't know, but to be totally honest, it's sad. But he's a really welcoming bloke. Um, the way that he presented it, answered people's questions and things like that on stage, like, really welcoming bloke and he'll answer any question that you've got. Uh, the event was actually, it was brilliant, a lot to learn. And for me, as a young age, 16, I would, I'm very interested. I'm very interested in deal sourcing, properties, and I've learned a lot from this and I'll, kept, I'll keep on learning from coming to these events. What do we think of Sue? Unbelievable. Unreal. He's like. so just like raw, authentic. Yeah. Yeah. There's no beating around the bush, but yeah. yeah, I think I really resonate with him because it sets you in the right direction. But if you, I don't know how to put it, it just... He's just real. He, he's no BS. What you see is what you get. Yeah. And I really like that from him. Back door has been fitted yesterday. Decent, quite nice. We have all of the fire regulations have been filled in. Everything's been done there. Obviously there's a sign off and there's a bit of emergency lighting that needs to be checked out. That's pretty cool. And then if we go through here, we have Western Power and the energy boards working together to get all that down there and all of this in here sorted. That's being done as we speak. And then if you come this way, patio doors here, fitted. Again, legislation is on point. They've been fitted there. And yeah, all the windows are in. Every window is in the property now, isn't it? I believe. I'm going to go through and check. There's some new ones behind us, if you have a look. Every window, from what I can see, and the outside has been done also my new front door is pretty cool. Look at this. Here is my new front door. Solid. MTV cribs, not coming in. Windows up here have been fitted. So this property guys, it's four flats, three one bedrooms and a two bedroom duplex. We're struggling with the council. They will not give us 
the addresses until these properties are more or less complete, which they're more or less complete. The kitchen's got to go in, the boiler's got to go in. All the central heating throughout the whole house has been done, and every flat has its own individual boiler. Now, we need the boilers up in order for them to run. The um, gas company is saying, give us the four individual addresses and we will put the supplies in so that you can install your boilers and you can use your gas. The council is saying, finish the properties and then we'll give you the addresses and then the gas company is saying, we need to do it now. We're at like ahead with them. We're trying to figure out the best and the correct way to do it. I've got the council coming here next week and then hopefully we can just say, come on guys, you can clearly see what's going on. Um, just give us the addresses. Now we pay council tax on four, on three addresses in here because this flat was illegal. Did you know, this is what the council have told us, so I'm just telling you, you can split an address into however many council taxes you want and pay them, but that does not mean that they will give you an address for each one. Um, I get it, I understand it, but it's a tiny little bit backwards. So, yeah. This is a project that I have had for a while now and I've not done anything with it. I sent some architects in there the other day and some of my builders and said, right, let's turn this into a house. Let's get it finished. Let's get it refurbed. Let's just get it over the line and then I'll decide what I want to do with it once it's done, whether I want to flip it or whether I want to refinance it to rent it out. So there's the entrance. We come in, we've got two rooms downstairs, a kitchen here and some back rooms. And then upstairs we have three bedrooms with a bathroom and then that could potentially be an ensuite. So that's the layout as it is right now. So now they've come back with a few options. So option one is three bedrooms with three ensuites, all individual with no master bathroom. Then they came back with bedroom one to have an ensuite, bedroom two nothing, bedroom three nothing, and then the existing bathroom, just turn it back into a bathroom. And then another option is bedroom one with an ensuite, bathroom there, bedroom two, bedroom three. So they've drawn three options out for me to start. And then downstairs, we have two options. So you come in, we have a living room, and then we have the kitchen with an open dining, and we have a bathroom at the back. Or we have the living room here, with the dining room there, the kitchen here, and a bathroom at the back. I don't know what option upstairs I'm going to go for, but the one downstairs that I want to go for is this one, but I want that to be a utility room because we have a bathroom and ensuite upstairs. So that will be a utility room, that will be a kitchen, that will be the dining, and that will be the living room. So yeah, that's what I have decided for this project, which I've had for ages and I just want to get it finished. I mean, the end value on this is like 350 to 400,000. So I want to get this sorted now. Another weekly, done, dusted. I have been sent a lot of things I need to review today. It's Friday, it is quarter to six. I have dinner with Aaron Addis, joint venture partner. Three times he's done a joint venture with me. Um, so I'm going out for dinner with him tonight. Touch up on the event last night. Unbelievable to have my Isabella back. Absolutely incredible. Um, she's unbelievable. She stole the show. The social media was a buzz with Isabella today. So that was really cool. My guy over there, sitting there, just, just on his own. We have something very special that we bought out to the property circle and to the outside world. Um, you watch me on social media, you look at the brand that we have built, you look at my social media following that's grown in the last three years, where we are in the property world, and we now know how we can help you guys do the same thing and replicate what we have done here. Um, so that's a big thing I'm going to touch upon next week. Ended the week with a couple of refinances, which is always pretty cool on a Friday. Um, I didn't expect it to happen, but my solicitor, she is the greatest solicitor in the country. Um, you watch the daily. Or the weekly, daily, weekly. Um, oh, oh, Isabella. Cruise 11. Ah, look at the smile on my boy's face. 
Oh, he's turned around. Oh, he's turned around. He's at his nan's house. Oh god, look who that is. It's the um it's the mother in law. Witch on the broomstick. Witch on the broomstick. Um right, I'll call you back in a second then, darling. I love you back. Alright. He's amazing. Ended it the week with the solicitor pulling out another refinance, which was amazing. Um, I've been sent a great property in Derby. Talked to you guys about um, Derby Article 4. Talked about it last year. I think I came out in the news yesterday. Just call me Mystic Stephen, but it's not actually Mystic, it's just that I know because I've got people I can speak to. Again, I want to end the weekly with a big shout out to Yanni from Yanomoyes. Not feeling great this week, not had the best week. Sometimes you hit a bit of a brick wall because you're not going where you want to go quick enough or you don't feel like it's working or that's how I felt. And sometimes you just need someone to put it all into perspective and that's why it's so important having a network and the people around you. The people around you are key. And Yanni pull, pulled me aside and he was like, Steve, listen, let's zoom out and let's talk about this and put everything back into perspective and it was just kind of like yep so it's really important that you have people who are ahead of you to 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 speak to you because when you get to different levels and when you get to higher levels every single new level you go to there's a new devil and it's really 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 difficult to keep growing and keeping the, your mental capacity at 100 percent and not letting any any doubts or anything kind of into your brain. No matter how strong you are, you will always let something creep in. So that's why having the people around you just to pull you back and go, listen, man up or woman up and get shit done. Keep moving, you're doing great. There's a billion people in the world that love to swap places with you. So keep going. So huge thank you. I appreciate that, Jan. Nice one. It's been a great week. It's been a very, very good week. Um, I've got site visits with university members tomorrow. I don't know whether I'm working on Sunday. No, no not working Sunday. Oh, God. As you can tell, exhausted. Um, family members, um, pub, Cockburn, down, arson this morning. So I was woken up very early, being there today. Phil wasn't with me, was you, Phil, when I went there? Nope. Otherwise, I'd do it. Showing you a burn down pub, burn down pub. But yeah, I'm going to have a great weekend. I'm going to rest a little bit this weekend, get my energy back. Also, back in the gym, hopefully. I'm not going to pretend like I'm consistently going to be at the gym, but I'm going to consistently tell you guys that I'm going to try and go to the gym. Consistency beats discipline over discipline when it's motivation. And when there's no motivation, we consistently stay consistent. Bars.